dar. Por que de rainha dar? Tchê? Vini Dana! Tchê, vou olhar pra lá. Liga aí. But anyway, so, but today we're going to look at our a new message last week was on the holiness of God. There's nothing hotter in the Bible, not even hell. That's the holiness of God. The holiness of God. And uh, you understand so many things about fire that you see in the Bible when you get a glimpse of His holiness. And His holiness can change you. It can change the great prophet Isaiah. It can change little old folk like us. Amen? So we saw that last week. Today... How do you handle the heat? How do you handle the heat? Say, I mean, man, it, it gets hot out there. Where's where my sunshine? You got a sunshine? I mean, sunshine. Look at that. Look at it. It's just hot, isn't it? You go to the beach, you know, you get to the beach, and you're just hot. What do you do when you, get, you start to get burned? Somebody tell me. And you start walking on that sand, your feet's burning. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, ooh. And then what do you find you? Look. Look, look, it's an umbrella. Amen. You lay on there and you get you something to drink and you cool off. You know, how do you handle the heat? You know what I'm saying? You know, even at the beach, listen, even at the beach, if you're laying there on the beach and you're getting your rear end burned, listen to me, unless you make a decision to get up off the beach, you're going to get burned. Is that true? Say, you got to make a decision. And even though you hate leaving, it's so pretty though. I don't want to leave. But you're getting burned up. Okay? But once you start to leave, you're going to get a peace. And you're going to be glad that you made the decision you made. And you can come back for another day. Amen? Do it again. Well, I want to talk to you this morning about how to handle the heat. Let's look at it. Let's move on. What do you do when the heat gets turned up? What do you do when the heat gets turned up? I mean when problems come in your life. When adversity comes into your life. What do you do when you're in that pressure cooker? When the things are just hot, man. We ain't talking about no beach. We're talking about my life here. What do you do when the heat gets turned up? And today's message, how to handle the heat. Can you say that with me? Come on. Don't go to sleep on me. How to handle the heat. Some of you seen the beach and you're already taking a siesta. Give me a break. Come on. How to handle the heat. That's what we're talking about today. Let's keep moving, right? Let's put in the warp speed there and see what we can do. 1 Peter 5.8, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant. Why? Read it with me. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walks about seeking whom he may what? Devour. Eat your lunch. That's what he wants to do. He wants to devour you. So what do you do when he's attacking you? What do you do when these problems and troubles and crises come into your life? How do you handle the heat, man? John 10.10, 10, great verse. Starts out with sort of an ugly part. The thief comes not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But hallelujah, Jesus said, I'm coming, they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. But problems are going to come. Do you know that saying? Am I like just like you're telling me something now or no preacher man? Okay? But problems are going to come. But how do you handle those hot times in your life? Because they're going to happen. Troubles are going to get there in your life. Let's keep moving. Now look, I'm not talking about troubles of your own making though today. I'm not talking about a well, preacher. Man, I've been smoking this stuff and I get lightheaded. Yeah, you know, it's going to happen, okay? You smoke stuff, you drink stuff, you act like a fool, you run around with women, let me tell you something, and, you, and you're mad because your wife came after you with a butcher knife? That's your problem, ain't my problem, amen? That's not what I'm talking about, being an absolute idiot and problems coming. Oh, church, pray for me. That ain't what I'm talking about. See, Satan's already got you, baby. I'm talking about when you're trying to do the right thing. Are you going to say it? Trying to work hard, trying to do the right thing. Not perfect, that's for sure. But you're trying to do the right thing. And attacks come in your life. And the heat gets turned up. How do you handle it? That's what we're going to talk about today. What do you do when doing right costs you? What do you do when doing right costs? Why, well, just don't do it then. Is that how you feel? Hope not. What do you do when doing right costs? Let's see a show of hands. Has doing right ever cost anybody in the building? Let me see your hands. Come on. Doing right ever cost? I mean, it might cost you a job. Might cost you some money. Might cost you some humbling yourself. Who knows what it's going to cost you? You know? Might cost you having to do some serious praying and forgiving somebody. Might cost you something. Okay? What do you do when doing right costs you? How do you handle the heat? 1 Peter 2, the Bible says, and we're getting somewhere, for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. This is a good thing, believe it or not, 
When you suffer, you did the right thing and you suffer for it. Because God gets the glory. He can get the glory in situations like that. And that's how He gets a lot of His glory. For what glory is it though? When you're buffeted for your own faults. And you take it patiently. That's no big deal. You got yourself in a big jam and, and you're taking it patiently. Well, it was your fault. Okay? Stop doing that crazy mess. Alright? So what good is that? But if when you do well, if when you do well, you suffer for it, that's a good thing. That's acceptable with God. For even here unto where you call, because Christ also suffered for us, leave you as an example that you should follow in His steps. Okay? So that's what we're talking about today. Suffering or facing adversity. The heat is turned up and you're trying to do the right thing. Amen? How many been there? Come on one more time. You've been there. Maybe some of you are there right now. Pastor, I'm trying to keep this marriage together. I'm trying to do the right thing. It's killing me. Maybe that's where you're at. I don't know what your situation is. I'm trying to hang in there at the job. I'm trying to do the right thing. I'm trying to hang solid. I mean, my kids, they're out there somewhere and it's just killing me, preacher. Maybe, I don't know what the situation is for you. But it's definitely hot when you get in that jam. Let's keep looking. And it's going to happen all the time. Satan hates your guts. He hates my guts. He's going to dog our heels. And, and one, you know, listen, for example, in marriage, if you look at somebody else's marriage and you go, well, why can't my marriage be like that? My marriage, you know, listen, you don't even know what they're going through. And the bottom line, if Satan's dogging your heels, you stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. Make it work. Do the best you can. And it happens. So let's look and see some different things today. Let's go, Raj. That beach scene is making me want to leave early. Don't ever put another beach scene up. Don't ever do that. <laughs> there are cycles of handling the heat. Can you say that? I really need some help because I'm worried. Here we go. There are cycles of handling the heat. One more time. There are cycles for handling the heat. Now we're going to give you something today. You can go online tomorrow, later, and, and click on it. You can get this message and a lot more stuff that you can find. Okay? But you're going to see that there are cycles to handling the heat that comes in our life. So let's look at these cycles of heat today. So how do we handle it? We go to the book of Daniel today. If you have your Bible, go to the book of Daniel. It's going to be on the big screen. Last week we looked at Isaiah. He was a prophet. This week we're looking at Daniel. So let's see what happens in the book of Daniel. Matter of fact, we're going to take a couple of weeks. We're going to take a couple of weeks and we're going to talk about how to handle the heat. Okay? Because that's a hot subject. So we're going to talk about it a couple of weeks. How to handle the heat. Let's look at it. Verse 1. The book of Daniel. Let's look at the heat that came in this guy's life. This is why God gave us the word. In the third year, the reign of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, came Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, unto Jerusalem, and he besieged it. He took it over. Okay? And the Lord gave Jehoiakim, king of Judah, into his hand, into Nebuchadnezzar's hand. With part of the vessels of the house of God, which he carried into the land of Shinar, to the house of his God, he brought the vessels into the treasure house of his God. So Nebuchadnezzar came in, defeated Jerusalem, and took these treasures back to the house of false gods. Verse 3. And the king spake unto Aspenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes. He told this guy, you pick special uh, people that you have... Uh, that you have uh, captured and made slaves, and you bring some of them to me, but only the best. Children in whom was no blemish. This is Neb talking. Well favored, skillful in wisdom, cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such had ability of them to stand in the king's palace, of whom they might what? Say that with me. Teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. Let's keep moving. And the king appointed them a daily provision of the king's meat, of the wine which he drank, so nourishing them three years, that at the end there they might stand before the king. Put them on a special diet. Now among these were the children of Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, unto whom the prince of the eunuchs gave names. He changed their names. He gave unto Daniel the name Belteshazzar. Hananiah, now we've heard of these dudes. Look, Shadrach. Mishael became Meshach. And Azariah became who? Abednego. So there you got Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. How many heard of these dudes? Let me see your hand. Okay, good. So you're with me. Some of you are with me. That's all right. If you hadn't heard, that's why you're here today. To hear the Bible, to learn. Okay? So let's look. How do you handle the heat? First of all, there's got to be a problem. Okay? There's got to be a problem. If you've got heat, if you've got Satan coming against you, there's a problem. 
Hello? NASA, we can't lift off. Got a problem, okay? There's a problem. What was the problem in our story today? Let's look at it. Here's the problem. Jerusalem was conquered. Let's just fly around. Jerusalem was conquered. These four young men were specifically selected to be slaves in the king's palace. Who are they again? Daniel. Let's use their changed name. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Isn't it funny that Daniel's name didn't stick? Belteshazzar. The poor Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego ain't never been remembered for who it was. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, 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 they are. Good grief. It ain't fair. They were going to be brainwashed with the Babylonian culture and the language. So here their, their country is, is defeated, besieged. They're taken prisoner. They're slaves. And you think you got problems? Okay. Their names have been changed. They're being brainwashed with this culture and with this language. You think they like that? Say, you think they hated that with everything inside of their guts or what? Sure they did. They were given these Babylonian names. Next. They were to eat the king's Babylonian meat. So there's all the problems. We see a bunch of problems that are happening. Did they deserve this? Yes or no? Say, somebody tell me. Huh. Did they deserve to have to go through this? We come, in, we come to find out these were good guys. They were men who loved the Lord. And so stuff's going to happen in your life. If you've got this idea that Satan ain't going to come against me, I'm never going to have any problems, that's why the church is like a revolving door. Oh, I felt good. Man, Jesus. And then another problem comes. Oh, where did Jesus go? And we just quit, man. That's not reality. Problems going to come. When you become a Christian, you don't get no halo. It ain't happening. you got some problems. These guys were great guys, and they had problems. So the heat's going to come. And you know what? They couldn't stop these things that happened to them. But they could choose to eat or not to eat. Did you know that? That's about all they could do, isn't it? So, they could choose that their country was defeated. They couldn't choose that they were taking slaves. They couldn't, they couldn't choose that they were sitting there and they locked up in the, and they're standing there in the king's palace. They couldn't choose that somebody started talking to them in a bunch of gibberish in some foreign language, trying to teach them culture and stuff like that. They couldn't do that. But you know what? When they set a plate of meat in front of them, they could choose to eat it or not. Are you hearing me today? Okay? Problem. They've got some problems. They've got adversity. Let's keep looking. Purpose. That's the second cycle when handling the heat. First of all is the obvious. The problem. Okay? You got that? That's easy. How do I handle the heat? Purpose. But Daniel, read that with me. But Daniel, what? Purpose in his heart that he would not what? defile himself with the portion of the king's meat. Nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore he requested the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. How do I handle the heat, preacher man? You know what Daniel did? He purposed in his heart. He purposed in his heart. If when Satan comes dogging you and adversity comes into your life and problems come into your life, you know what? You're going to have to make a decision. You're going to have to make a decision. And you're going to have to be determined. And that's what Daniel was. He was determined. Let's look at it. Why not eat it? Why not eat it, boy? Why not eat it? Daniel, what's wrong with it? What's wrong with it? Guys, why not eat this meat? Well, the meat probably had been sacrificed to false gods. He wasn't going to eat it. And you might say, well, that's no big deal to you. Well, that's you. Big deal to him, right? Look at this. Why not eat it? The food was probably prohibited in the law of Moses. You can check it out some of Leviticus 11. It was probably prohibited food for him to eat anyway. And you know, they might have determined in their heart, you know, no matter what they put us through, we're going to try our best to keep God's law. We're going to try our best to do the right thing. Purpose. And that's what we've got to do when we're facing adversity. Why not eat it? It probably, they probably had made a sacred vow to the Lord. They had probably said that certain things they would not eat because God's Word said it. They might have even gone an extra mile. And said, because we're Christians, we're just not going to partake in that. That's just the way it is. This is a vow we made to the Lord. How are you in your vows and commitments to the Lord? When problems come and little adversity comes, is that when they fly out the window? Are you you're serious about your commitment to Jesus Christ. You hear me today? What do you do when things get heated up? What do you do when the, when the burner starts burning you a little bit? Satan comes dogging you. You need to have purpose. Here's what they did. Say that with me. They chose to do what was right. Help me. Come on now. One more time. They chose to do what was right. Right. Problems. 
Choose to do what's right. Let's keep moving around. That's what you do when the heat is, is on. You keep the next turn. Do the right thing. Do the right thing. That's what, you know, I have the heat on in my life many times. How many say you just dogged your heels? Well, let me see your hands. Come on. He's dogged your heels, problems in your life. And have you been tempted to not do the right thing? I've been tempted as a pastor many times to quit, to quit, to quit, to quit, to quit. I got one preacher friend. He calls me and he says, Gary, I quit every Monday. He said, but I ain't left yet. I've been here 20 years. He said, but I quit every Monday. You know, and that, you know how you feel sometimes. But you know, you just must muster up the strength in the Holy Spirit and just do the right thing. Amen? Amen. Do the right thing. That matters. That's what made America great, by the way. Praise the Lord. Do the right thing. When problems come, anybody can take a cakewalk when it's fall and the sun ain't shining too bright. You can go, well, I laid on the beach all day. Well, pink Harry Dale. Okay? The sun wasn't in out hardly. Okay? But it's when the heat's really on that doing the right thing. It's difficult. Let's keep moving. Before you can get the third cycle, something happens. Let's review the two cycles so far. Here we go. First of all, you got problem. Say that with me. You got problem. And then you've got purpose. I've got a purpose in my heart to do the right thing. I've got a purpose that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can make it through this. I can make it. God is bigger than this problem. I can make it. Amen. Hallelujah. Do what you got to do. Do the right thing. But before you get to this third step, something happens always. Here it is. Pop it up. Rationalization or excuse making. Rationalization or excuse making. Is that right, Sam? Oh, how many of us have made decisions? Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And then all of a sudden, it's like you see the little, the little devil thing and you got the little angel thing on your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And we start to excuse make. You're not going to be able to handle the heat if you excuse make. If you're laying on the beach getting burned, you can lay there all day. Going, I mean, you're burning up, blistered. Your body's all blistered. You go, man, I, I, I'm getting up. I'm getting up. But if you don't get up, you ain't got up, right? You got to get up and start moving. Not excuse making. Let's look at our story. The enemy wants you to change your thinking. Say that with me. That's good for us. The enemy wants you to change your thinking. That's why this adversity comes in our life. That's why these problems come. We have an adversary, the devil, who wants us to change our thinking. He doesn't want you to pray. He doesn't want you in the Word of God. He doesn't want you to say, I can do all things to Christ or anything. He doesn't want you to say, my marriage is going to make it. So death do us part me just that. That's what's going to happen. Okay? He wants you just, just to do whatever. He wants you to cut corners. No, I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to do that. You know, why not? He wants you to rationalize. He wants you to excuse make. He wants you to change your thinking. This is not so much about the event that's going on in your life right now, the problem. It's about getting you to change the whole way you think, man. He wants you to be ineffective for God. Let's look at it. Here's some excuses they could have made. Look at it. Here's what they could have said about the meat. The king said it. Got to do it. King said it. Got to do it. Why? Well, he king. Got to do it. Let's look at another one. Rationalize it. If I don't do it, I get killed, Jack. Is that a good one? That's probably a good one right there. If I don't do it, I'll get killed. Let's look at this one. How about this one? This ain't gonna help us get no promotion. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Minigo, you know, it ain't gonna help us, man, get no promotion. If we say no to the king's meat. Nobody know except us if we eat it. We the only four dudes in the house. If we just keep it a secret. Nobody will know that we did it, right? Say, what do you do when the heat gets turned up? How about this one? Why stand for God? He left us. Our homeland destroyed. They took the vessels. They put them in some false God's temple. We're, we're locked up here. It's not right. God left us. Why should we stand for Him? Do you see how that excuse making works? Listen. Between purpose and that next step is excuse making. But if you hang in there, you can make it there. Hallelujah. Come on. Let's look. There's that beach again. Wow. <laughs> Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's look at another verse. 
John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. Which leads us to the next point. Peace. 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 When the problem comes, I hope you're listening. I mean, this ain't some screaming yeah. message I got going today, I don't guess, but bottom line, it's helpful because most of us suffer and have trouble, right? Okay? Between the problem and you got purpose in your heart to do the right thing, I tell you what, if you can get past that rationalization and that excuse making, there's going to be a peace that's going to come over you. How many have done that before? When you got past that excuse, you wanted to do the right thing. But then your friends are talking to you and everything else and Satan's really putting the heat on maybe. But buddy, once you get the peace of God on it, aren't you good to go? So, come on. Put your feet in the peace of God, baby. You can do it. That's the key here. I know you're hurting right now. Some of you I talk to, I know you're struggling. Listen to me. You, you hang in there. God loves you. He wants you to have victory in your life. He is for you. He's not against you. Satan is your adversary. Jesus said, I've come that you might have life and might have it more abundantly. I'm for you, man. And once you get there, I'm telling you, great things can happen in your life. I'm not saying it's all going to get easy. Oh, there's going to be some consequences. But you're not going to be moved. You're going to have the confidence. And it's going to be really helpful. I hate to keep talking about marriage, but it's important, okay? But I, I tell you, my wife says I shouldn't say this, but I do it anyway. Uh, she had said I shouldn't say it. She says, why do you say it? Uh, but we struggled early on in our marriage. We struggled. I didn't know how to love her. I didn't know. Grew up in a home. It was a hell hole. Mom and dad hated each other's guts. And I'd been a hell raiser. And all of a sudden, I, I did get saved. I became a Christian. I even went to Bible school. And we got married, and all of a sudden, it's going to be a happy little marriage. It's not. It was hard. And the first three years, were, I'd say it was like hell. It was tough. And she hates it when I say that. I'm not saying because of you, baby. It was me. I know you. She just said it was your fault. I know. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, listen. The day that I just gave up, gave up to the Lord, and said, Lord, and tears, and I don't know how to love this woman. I don't know what to do. I'm damaged goods, Lord. I mean, I didn't know how to love anybody. How do I do this? And he said to me, he said, you, and this is just Bible. You might wonder how the Lord speaks to me. He speaks through His Word. Amen. Read it. Amen. And once you hide the Word of God in your heart, He'll bring it to your memory, and He will speak to your heart. And he told me, flat out, Gary, love her like I love you. Is there a verse in the Bible that says that? Yes. It's in Ephesians. Quote it with me if you know it. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the and gave Himself for it. And then, I, this, then my conscience said this to me, and that is, and Him speaking to my spirit, you know, and basically you're not very loving, Gary, and I love you. And so I started. And you know what happened? Peace. Peace. Did our problems go away? What do you think? Yes or no? Huh? <laughs> no. But we started to be able to work with them. Amen? And started to have a foundation. So peace is so important. And that's what's happening in our story. Keep watching. It's not going to be terribly long. Hang in here. Verse 9. What's going to happen in our story? Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the eunuchs. If they would have bailed, he would have never known that. Do you see what I'm saying? But he stood firm. Is he going to get in trouble? Well, guess what? God said, you know, I'm going to change that guy's heart. He's going to, he's going to, I'm going to show favor on, on you through him. And the prince of the eunuch said, Daniel, I fear my lord the king with appointed your meat and your drink. For why should he see your faces worse likened than the children which are of your sort? Then shall you make me endanger my head the king. The problem didn't go away. But you can see how the problem might have a chance of working out. Huh? Got the guy on your side. Now, if he'd have been adamant, hated his guts, probably killed him. But no, God was working, and he can work in your problem. Here's what the Bible says. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. It's not, friend, that other people don't have problems. Are you the only one with them? It's that so many people have faith, and they, have, they believe in the power of God, and they persevere. And they purpose to do the right thing until they get the peace of God in their life. And that's how they're making it. Okay? Excuse making it ain't going to cut it. 
Oh, you don't understand what their problems are. I guarantee you, whatever you're going through in this room today, there's somebody in this room today that has gone through that, is going through that, and they can talk about it. That's not to, that's not to put your problem down. There are people listening to my voice, like my mother, she was murdered 12 years ago. There are people in this room who know what it's like to have their family member murdered. In this room, I'm not the only one. There's several, and they talk to me about it. We all, there's nothing, there's nothing new under the sun that doesn't make it easy. But let that help you with your excuse making. Come on. You're never going to get the victory until you stop having that fear. And the peace of God can give you that hope that you need in your life. Look at this. Great verse, you ought to underline it, mark it, circle it, do something. There is no temptation taken you, but such as what? Come unto man. But God is faithful, hallelujah. Who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will with the temptation, I love this part, also make a what? Way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Amen. Well, you don't understand. I might not understand, but I do know this. You can make it. You can make it. You can make it out of this trouble you're in. This is first this problem that you're facing. Keep it. Number four. So what happens? We're in the cycles of heat. It's amazing. Then comes the plan. Look at it. Come on. The plan. God will give you wisdom. God will give you wisdom. How many of you thought you were pretty dumb before, but God gave you wisdom and you got yourself out of this jam with His help? Ever been, anybody like that in the building? It's amazing. God will allow you through His Word and through His Spirit to have a plan. And you can make it, man. And boy, does that ever help your what? You know what I'm saying? Wow! And let's look at it. Here's the plan. Then said Daniel to Melisar, what's he going to do if he ain't going to eat your meat? What's he going to do? Whom the prince of the eunuchs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Prove thy servants, he says. I beseech thee ten days. And let them give us pulse or vegetables to eat. He didn't ask for some fancy diet, did he? He said, if you just give us some vegetables, sir. Vegetables? That's all you want? Yeah, just some vegetables. And some water to drink. We'll be fine. That was his plan. It, that, that's the funny thing, too. A lot of times when we're facing a burst in problems, it don't take rocket science to figure out how to get out of this thing. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes it's simple, but our pride gets in there. We want more than what we really need to make it work. And this is all they needed. This was the plan. He says this, then let our countenance be looked upon. Y'all bring us out and you look at it. You worried about us, you know, looking, you know, sickly and weak. You, you bring us out and look at us. And the countenance of the children to eat the portion of the king's meat, as thou seest, deal with thy servants. Give us ten days, chief. Can you do that for us? Say, some vegetables, some water, and you check us out in ten days and see, see if we're not going to be just fine. Can you do that? Keep looking. So he came up with a plan. He came up with a plan. Are you seeing how to handle the heat, son? So I do. If you're laying on the beach, you're getting burned, you've got to make a decision to get up. Then you're going to have peace as you're walking to the car or wherever you're going to the shelter and you get under it and there's going to be a way out of that heat, amen? There is a way out of the heat. You're not going to have to live your whole life in the heat. There are ways out. And here's the beautiful thing. Provision. Say that with me. Provision. God will provide for you. Let's see what He did in this story. But my God shall supply all your need, N-E-E-D, not wants, according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God can do that. I'm standing before you today, 44 years old, okay? And I'm not as old as some of you, but let me tell you something. I'm older than some of you, and I'm telling you, since the time I've been a Christian, let me tell you something. God has taken care of Gary Clark. He's met every one of my needs, man. I haven't gone to him yet, and I've wondered if he's going to do it, but I haven't gone to him yet where he didn't meet my need. He has taken care of me. He's a great God, friend. He will take care of you. And you understand, I can't make it. You can make it. Stop talking like that. He will provide for you. What did he do for Daniel? Say that with me, would you? God will make a way. One more time. Come on. God will make a way. God will make a way out of this mess I'm in. Help me, Lord. He'll do it. He'll do it. He's done it for me. He's done it for others. Did he do it for Daniel? Verse 14. Now some of you, this is scripture you've seen, but it's good to see it again. So he consented to them in this matter, and he proved them ten days. What does that mean? He gave them vegetables, gave them some water, and he did it for ten days. 
And at the end of 10 days, watch it. Their countenance appeared what? Fairer and fatter. Now I tell people this. That's why I ain't no vegetarian. <laughs> Them vegetables will make you fat. <laughs> well, I ain't no vegetarian right there. I got it right in the Bible. <laughs> I see a bunch of you men, yo, oh, he's bad, he's bad. That's for my brothers, my men brothers here. I've got <laughs> anyway, but no. Hey, guess what? They looked good, didn't they? Say, they looked good, they were fair, they weren't emaciated, okay? They looked good in flesh than all the children. They appeared fairer and fatter than any of them that had been eating the king's meat, etc. So God provided, didn't he? Say, God will provide a way for you. He will make a plan. He'll make a way out of the jam that you're in if you trust Him. Next thing we see in these cycles of heat is protection. Some of you go through struggles and you suffer. And there are various degrees of suffering and persecution. But God will protect you. You've got to believe that. My mother, it was often told her, and I didn't know it until after her death, and her friend came to me and also a pastor who had given her private counsel she said that my stepdad would tell her many times before she'd go to sleep, I'm going to kill you tonight while you sleep. I'm going to kill you tonight while you sleep. So after my mother's murder, he did kill her. And after her murder, we went in, and it was a few days later, and the place had been cleaned up, and the crime scene was taken care of. But we went to get personal effects. And I lived in, and some of you have heard the story before, but I picked up my mother's pillow, because she slept in a private, it's her own room. Actually, it used to be my room. And under that pillow was a hatchet. She feared. You know what I'm saying? How did you feel when somebody told you right before you go to sleep tonight, I'm going to kill you while you sleep? And you knew the guy would do it. You see what I'm saying? How did you feel? You know what my mama did? She read Psalm 91. You ought to read that. He's going to take care of you. He'll take care of you in the nighttime. The terror that comes to your soul. Read Psalm 91 sometime. God will protect you. You might say, well, He didn't protect your mama. Hey, friend, my mama was a martyr for Jesus Christ. My mother gave her life for the Lord. She stood for Jesus Christ. I'm not saying that it doesn't happen sometimes, but He protected her for many, 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 many years. And God didn't kill my mama. Some evil, mean, horrible fellow did that. Okay? Took his own life. And today I know for sure, God didn't accept Christ, didn't want Christ his life, and He's burning in hell. Mama's on the streets of golden heaven. Mama's doing fine. You see what I'm saying? Things are going to happen for you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Protection. But you can't, you can't be scared to death all the time. You've got to get in the Word. You know what? You might have to get a hatchet. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? That's what she did. I'm not recommending that. However, hey, if your life, here's what I tell women who are being abused. Get out. Get out. I don't say that flippantly. Okay? If somebody will stake his hand and beat you, he'll kill you. Okay? You know, you just can't mess with that. And, and men that do that are horrible. That's another message for another day. But the bottom line, protection. So what happened? Thus Melzer took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink, and he gave them pulse. He became, he, he got in on the deal with them. He started taking care of them. It was okay. He gave them the vegetables. He protected them. He watched out for them. He had their back. And God will do that for you. He will protect you. When you're dealing with the heat. And then finally, promotion. And we're done this morning. As for these four children, God gave them knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. Here's the deal. Keep that screen there if you don't mind. When we go through adversity, when we go through hard times, when Satan's dogging our heels, I tell you what, friend, peace is a great place to get. But then you get that plan. And then you get that provision. And you get that protection. And then I'm telling you something. Something happens. You go to a higher level of living. Are you hearing me? Even in my mother's trials that she went through, I watched Mama. And her pastor told me, he said, Gary, he said she was on another level. She was walking a higher road. And she felt, you know, she, she was really serving Jesus Christ. Isn't that true in our life so? How many of us that have had hard times and we have overcome and we've succeeded and God has done great things in our life. And we, I mean, I'm telling you, it gives us a whole new faith. That's why you got to get from purpose and peace. you got to get over that excuse making. Amen? Because there's great stuff out there. You can hit Satan right square in his face and bust him in the head. You know what I'm saying? Because he's dogging you and you can be victorious. Great things can happen. So that's what happened to these guys. They excelled in knowledge and wisdom. 
Daniel had understanding and visions and dreams. Read the book of Daniel. It's wild what God did in this guy's life. At the end of the days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before the king. Look at it. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Therefore stood they before the king. There was no guys like this. God promoted them. And in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them, say that with me, ten times better than all the magicians and astrologers that were in his realm. And Roger, we're wrapping up. Say that with me one more time. Ten times better. I'm done. The struggles that you're facing, the problems that you face, maybe your marriage is having trouble. How many of you would stay with it if you knew maybe in a year, six months, two years, your marriage could be ten times better? Who wouldn't sign a deal like that? Say, who wouldn't sign a deal like that? But we give up so early. I'm not saying there are horrible situations. I know that. But I mean, or, or a job, a job that you're at, it just seems like it's real cruddy, man. But if you stay in there, how many wouldn't sign a contract if it's going to get ten times better? What I'm saying is we don't know the future. We don't know what's going to happen. What we do know is we can purpose to do the right thing. It all hinges on that. Doing the right thing. And then the peace of God comes. And then the Holy Spirit and the Word of God is activated in your life. And I tell you what, friend, great days await you. Great things can happen in your life. And that's what I've seen ten times better. I think we're about done, aren't we, Ron? That's what we got. So then what happens after you get through the problem? So my guess, pop it up. More problems. <laughs> you have more problems. You have more problems. But it's like an athlete. Once you get down a certain routine, it might be in baseball, you might learn to catch, you might learn to hit, you might learn to see that fastball, how that curveball comes in there. And baby, once you sort of get it down, bring it on, baby. Bring it on. Amen? And so that's what we can do. We grow, grow through problems and adversity. And God uses that in some unusual way. Cycles of handling the heat. I think He's going to pop them up one more time. Say it with me if you don't mind. And we're done this morning. Problem, purpose, peace. There's the plan. And then watch it. Provision, protection, promotion. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's stand together. Thank you for listening today. I appreciate it.